Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, we are covering the kind of late breaking news that United are in fact exploring that loan possibility for Amrabat at the moment, um, as well as a few of the other considerations that are in play as uh, we look to the end of the window with one day left. And uh, coming down to the wire, kind of as expected, as we talked about in yesterday's video. So let's get right into it. All right, so as we discussed yesterday and, and a few times recently, you know, the United's situation has been difficult, and I'll talk about the finances in a different section, but let's just get into the, the straight news on it. David Ornstein this morning reporting that Manchester United have been in discussions over a loan move for Sofia and Amrabat. This has been confirmed by a few other people, with James Ducker at the Telegraph now also saying that a permanent deal is unlikely given the financial situation and restrictions at United, um, and that it would be a bit difficult. You also have DiMarcio saying that Fiorentina have rejected a loan offer from United and are looking for a purchase. I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. You know, like, like I've been saying recently... Uh, United were probably going to need a loan to get something done. If McTominay does not leave and it does not look like he will be sold, I just don't think there's the time for it now, then they would need a loan, uh, a loan midfielder. And this is what we were just talking about yesterday, that they need a loan midfielder coming in. And that, you know, maybe that that's why I was leaning towards maybe Gravenberch, because I don't know the possibility of Amrabat on loan. I don't know the possibility of Gravenberch on loan at this point in time. But there was talk earlier of, of maybe there being more possibility of grabbing Birch on loan. They'd asked about him in January. So it's a bit tricky. And, and the question, of course, comes down to with, with Amrabat here is if it's a financial restriction, they could offer an obligation for next year if they really wanted him. They could offer an obligation for $20 million next summer. And the concern here is then, if they're not willing to do that, then obviously they don't actually want him that badly. And this is where I've got mixed signals, right? And this is where I've, I've had my information, which has said, look, I, I understand, you know, David Ornstein says he's, he's the, the top of the list. Now, I think that there's a context to that statement, which is, top of the list in terms of the midfielders that they could get feasibly this summer. Uh, I very strongly stand by the information that I've had that they are exploring other midfielders, perhaps for the long term. But I, I mentioned this before, even with um, the center back situation too, and, and Jeremy Pino. A lot of times I when I'm hearing names and, and such, because of where some of the information I have comes from, I think a lot of it is maybe for the future. Believe it or not, United are actually scouting and observing and analyzing players ahead of time. And especially now that this whole kind of structure is in place, I think by next summer, it's going to be, you know, we got like Hoyland this year identified by the club. Mount was actually a club target that, that Eric Ten Hag liked too, one of the names that fit alongside McAllister and others. But <clears throat> I think that by next summer, it's going to be a lot of those kind of targets you know, to go for a lot of club type identified targets from the scouting and, and data department. And I know that they've been looking at left footed center backs and right footed center backs because we're going to need two center backs over the next one to two years to replace Maguire and, and Lindelof or Maguire and Varane and Lindelof. I don't know. May at least push Varane to a backup. Um, and need a forward at, at, at least one, potentially either a striker or a right winger, another top midfielder, because Casemiro is likely going to be phasing out a little bit, and you want at least four to five proven good midfielders, and, and Kavi Mainu is rated very highly, but he's not yet proven, of course, and then maybe a right back. And so a lot of this is that these players may be being looked at for the future, like Onana, like Thuram, like others that okay, this summer we don't have the funds for it. Maybe next, sum next summer there'll be a top target. That does happen. It happened with the center back situation. It's happened with a lot of targets over the last few years that I've, that I've been hearing about. 
that they became targets the following year. And, um, and so, you know, that might be the situation here, why they don't necessarily want to buy. I, I've been talking, but I don't know, to be honest. Here's the point. I think what it comes down to it is that I think if Kabi Mainu wasn't injured, I don't know that they'd be getting Amrabat in. Uh, and I think that Kabi Mainu's injury coupled with Mount's injury means they feel like they have to get somebody in. And uh, and Amrabat is not a bad player. I think he's viewed as, as a good player, but I'm not sure long-term whether or not he's the fit. But we'll see. If they do a loan with obligation, then you could say, yes, they obviously want him for the long-term, maybe as a rotational six slash eight. And then they're definitely, you know, next summer, you're going to have to see Scott and Erickson probably go. And um, maybe we don't get another midfielder in. <clears throat> But that, that's kind of the, the trickiness of this, is, is I definitely stand by the fact that I know they've been talking to other midfielders and, and looking at other midfielders who are potentially maybe viewed as higher rated for the long term. And so I think it's a, it's, a mix, it's, a, it's a mixture of trying to resolve the current problem with the future plans. And, um, and that's why they've been reticent to buy um, Sofia and Amrabat. And that's how I feel about this. I, I do stand by that that aspect of this information, whereas a loan with an option would be great because then we can solve the now problem, but also see how he performs. Maybe he performs up to the level where they say, yeah, perfect, we'll buy him, he fits right in. We're happy with the quality that he has in making the transition to, to England, and um, and that's that. So I, I we we'll just have to wait and see if we will offer an obligation or not. And if we won't, then, you know, that's probably your answer that next summer, you know, that next summer we're, we'll be looking at um, certainly a, there's other midfielders that are higher up on our on our on our priority list. But I do hope this happens now. Um, if it doesn't, you know, we might keep then exploring uh, a deal for, you know, um, we might keep exploring a deal for like Raven Birch or someone like that if we can get a loan We'll have to see, right? We'll have to see what happens there if uh, if we can do it, if we can get it done, something. Because obviously we're trying to get something added in the midfield, but the permanent is the problem right now. And I'll talk about the finances of that in a minute because um, it comes down to the Glazers and then it's not making excuses for them, but understanding what the club have, have to go through. Uh, obviously, part and parcel to this is Donny Van de Beek. Uh, there's a couple of offers for him now. It sounds like United have accepted one offer for him, but he's still having to make a decision on where to go. It's another player. Look, you know, Maguire got a lot of heat for not giving up money to go on a move, and that is totally understandable. Totally understandable. Uh, I agree. I, I think he should have pushed for that move to West Ham. Going a little bit under the radar is Donny Van de Beek. One of the reasons the moves have fallen through is because he doesn't want to take a pay cut either. That's one of the reasons it's been hard to loan him out. And here's a player who's wasted four years of his career at United so far, or three years, and now is the fourth, I don't remember, and isn't willing to, to take a pay cut to get his career back on track. You know, if he doesn't make one of these moves, it's because he doesn't want to go to one of these clubs. And it's like, I, I you know, Donny Van de Beek was purchased for $45 million and we've gotten way less usage out of him than Harry Maguire. I think right now, Donny Van de Beek is the worst signing in United's history in terms of value for money. There's been virtually zero, zero usage out of it, uh, out of that $45 million. And his career is totally stalled. And at this point in time, if he is not willing to make a move and get his wages covered and, uh, you know, whatever it takes to get his career back on track and get some play time where nobody will even buy him because they don't know if he can even make it through a season, then he deserves quite as much criticism as Harry Maguire would. I mean, come on. At this point in time, he has to now make this work. And, and it is, I'm only reason I'm bringing this up is because concerning. Fabrizio tweeted, and I think he has very good sources with Donny Van de Beek, that he hasn't made a decision, that he hasn't, you know, got, agreed any terms with anyone. 
make a decision. You know, he's not going to play at United. He's obviously not not fit for, for the Premier League and for this club at this level. Um, he's got to push for a move too and agree to go somewhere. And that would be a big help because it would free up some wages, maybe give a fee and help us maybe add to the pot. You know, maybe if we were, you know, for Amrabat, if the loan that we're fee we're offering is minimal and they want a buy option, well, maybe if we can offer or they want an obligation, maybe by offering a couple more million on the on the loan plus an option, we can get it done without that obligation. So we'll see. But uh, it would really help Donny Van de Beek actually gets out of the club and and for him to restart his career. It's kind of crazy. He, he should be absolutely willing to do that by now. Um, there's a few reports that United are still looking at or hoping to getting a, um, you know, um, that are still hoping to get a, a, uh, a forward in on loan, something from the Daily Mail. I know that Eric Ten Hag has won it. I know that no matter what anybody says, you know, he was thinking with Mason Greenwood and that they need a forward, that they want a forward. You know, right now their options are Rashford and Garnacho on the left, which is good. Sancho, Martial, Hoyland, and Anthony. And that's four players for, you know, Garnacho is not ready to start. So you have one nailed on starter who's productive in Marcus Rashford. You have Martial's fitness can't be counted on, but it was a decent player, but really slowed down, it looks like. Rasmus Hoyland is unproven. Sancho, who hasn't got going. Anthony, who's pretty nailed on as a starter, but really needs to get going. You've got one productive, proven forward in that team. And if one, if an injury hits, you're instantly reliant again on, you know, what if Rashford gets injured? Then you're reliant on Garnacho, Hoyland, Anthony to produce goals for you. And I just don't think that's a safe bet. And so I can understand it, you know, why you would want somebody in who can who can produce and get goals and maybe play on, you know, the right or something. But somebody who can who can add goals to the team um, and be productive. And, and you know, he had been looking at someone like Taremi earlier in the window, but, you know, don't have the money, it seems. And um, so I, I know that he would like to. I don't think we'll get anybody personally. Um, I don't think we'll get anybody. But but obviously that's something I've been saying for a few weeks now, and it's it's being reported. I just don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, so you know, in terms of FFP, here's the thing, right? We went through these calculations earlier in the window, before the window, about this 80, 70, 80, 90 percent thing, and I don't think there's any concerns there. Obviously, we don't have all the details of the club's finances. There's claims that the FFP thing comes down to losses and things like that, but. We don't know how true it is. It's very easy to point to it and say we can't do it because of FFP constraints. But we could have sold players. We could have sold Scott McTominay for a 30 million a year, 30 million profit, which funds an enormous amount of transfers. We could have done that. And the fact that we didn't tells me there's something else going on here. And I, 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 you know, the thing is, the only people who really know for sure are are at the very top. So, you know, the person telling telling journalists and 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 putting it out there probably believes it. <laughs> you know, it's the line, and they're gonna run with it because they have no reason not to. But the only people who are truly privy to that information in detail and know are the Glazers. And um, this is, you know, essentially what it comes down to is 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 we've been sell to buy. And if, if you look at how it's gone, we went over to like 170 and then went back down with sales to around 120. And um, and I think it's just that's the number that they want to sell, that they want to be at in terms of purchases. And and this is the Glazer model. This is obviously the problem with the whole thing. This is this is the issue. It's not based on football success. It's based on finance. You know, it, it's based on it's based on what they feel they could feasibly afford without, you know, having to put any money in or invest or anything like that, right? And and that's what tells you it's, this is a Glazer window, clearly. You know, last summer they said, "Cool, we'll give you that extra money on that on the line for uh, for Anthony and such," and then they're not doing it this summer. Or one of two things are happening. Either they're not giving that money or the club don't want to ask for it for players like Amrabat when it might take away from next summer's spending. And obviously what this tells you is that right now they're here to stay. 
if they were on the verge of selling, right, you'd think that, and they have an agreement and they're like ready to move forward, that they'd say, yeah, well, new owners can cover this, this credit, this equity line. They'd be able to work out some kind of agreement there, but they're not. And it just, it feels like a glazer window. It, it's so typical. It's like, we, you know, I think the players we got are good. I think if we can get a loan in for Amrabat, it would really help for this season for what we need. I think that it's going to be a lot dependent on Hoyland. I don't think it's like a bad window as, as people are making it out to be. I think we've got a lot of good work in. And I think long term, there's a there's a few more things needed. But right now, um, you know, the club should have should be getting in. Here's my here's where I'm at. OK, if we think we want someone like Onana or, or Taram or someone like that in the midfield, then we should be buying them now. We shouldn't have to wait till next summer. That's the reality of it. We should have sold McTominay for $30 million and bought Onana. We should have sold him to West Ham and bought Onana. Or sold him to West Ham and bought Taram. I don't care. If there was somebody we really wanted, that's what we should have done. But that's not the Glazer way. It's to push it off, hold on to assets, minimize, work within these summer windows. So it's frustrating in that regard because I think more could be done to have taken us over the edge this year. Um, I still think it's a decent window. I think we've got good players that I think are going to work out. I think we might see, you know, Rasmus Hoyland finally this weekend. But um, I think we could have done a lot more. That's the facts of it. And um, we're going to have to see what the, the last couple of days hold. But, you know, it, it's going to come down to, I think, let's see what they'll offer on this Amrabat thing. If they're, if they're willing to offer an obligation, that's something I'd be a little surprised if they do. But if they do, if the FFP thing is real, then they could offer an obligation if they really want Amrabat. If they won't offer an obligation, then the reason is they don't necessarily want Amrabat or they're thinking we want him, but not enough to limit our spending next summer. And that is Glazernomics right there. Okay, so that's what I have for today. It's kind of interesting, obviously very fluid times when it gets towards the end of the window. Don't be surprised if if it doesn't work out with Amrabat on loan that we get some random name or someone else pops up out of the blue that we can get in on loan um, to make coverage for, for a little while during this injury kind of crisis. OK, so that's it for now. Uh, obviously, it's been it's been a bit wild. Um, I'll do a video tomorrow, obviously, for the deadline and then reviewing the window and discussing it after that. But um, that's what I have for now. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe turn notifications on and I'll see you in the next video.